Hey there, we're joined with Lucy today. It's great to have you. I love your background. Thank you. <laughs> I love your hair. It probably won't be the hair we're going to see. Is that correct? Well, yes, this is my pin curls to go under my wig so that I can put the wig cap on. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Rock and roll. Well, I wanted to ask about that. Maybe we start with some character development, how it's been in the time of COVID, how you work as an artist, anything about character development you want to share with our our friends. Yeah, this play, I think specifically, was really interesting for me personally, um, because my character, I mean, all the characters were, you know, based off of real people. So Alempe de Gouge is a real woman. She was an actual playwright in the 18th century during the French Revolution. Um, and it's just, I actually wrote an essay about her last year, just chose a random person event topic about, you know, that took place in Paris and I happened to choose Olympe de Gouges. Um, so she's a really cool person and I've always really liked her. Um, so that's what's just been different about this play specifically is just that she was a real person. But what's interesting about her is there's little to nothing about her personal life, um, like recorded. So um, that was one thing. I mean, we did a lot of reading I read her trial, like the script of her trial, um, listened to podcasts, you know, read little biographies, watched little documentaries, things like that. Um, so mostly kind of just try to take things from, you know, what I learned about her as a real person and try to apply that. Um, and also obviously though the play has some things that aren't necessarily historically accurate. Um, so there's other things to juggle too. I mean, one thing in the play is that she seems very scared of dying mm -hmm. and of the guillotine and of, you know, putting things out there that are, might get her on the, on the guillotine. Um, but from a lot of the things I found, it didn't seem like she was a fearful person, it seemed like she was very brave. So things like that, that are very kind of have to juggle the two. Um, so that kind of helped though, in a way that to figure out how did she eventually get to be the brave woman that everybody remembers her to be um, and how she wrote her own story to be remembered the way she's remembered. So those mm. are just interesting things that I thought about. Yeah, no kidding. And, and do you think the, the show that you're doing, the portrayal of her fear w was more historically accurate? That was important? Why, why do you think that was an important part of the show that you're doing? I think, I mean, for her, a lot of the fear that you see in the play and I realize is more private. It's more personal. It's mm. in her mm. own space. She's, yeah. you know, sharing it with these few women. Um, but, you know, when you see her, you know, speak to crowds, she seems like she is not afraid of anything when she, you know, ends up spoiler alert, real, in real life, getting her head cut off. She does not seem scared. Um, she puts out a lot of material that is really controversial and insanely ahead of her time. Like she was very um, radical for her time. Um, so I think that in a way like is probably, I mean, she probably was, you know, no one has no fear. So I think that, I mean, who can know, but I think that the way she's portrayed, you know, when she's in public, we, we have scenes where she's in public. She, I think that is historically accurate. You know, they took her actual line from when she was about to get her head chopped off, you know. Um, so I think, you know, it's interesting to just think about what she was like behind closed doors because no one really knows. So, yeah. Wow. Speaking of closed doors, I know this <laughs> deals with things that might be relevant to our current political climate, our COVID climate, can you help the audience maybe connect a couple dots? What can we as an audience walk away with from the show? Yeah, um, so one really big thing for my character specifically um, that I've taken away is she talks a lot about how important art is and how, you know, artists and writers and we are we're the people who are supposed to make change and, you know, people want to she wants people to come see her plays so that she can make the world a better place. And I think that, you know, we, there's not many things we can do right now. <laughs> um, we just, you know, we don't have many options, but one thing that, one of my favorite things about theater is that it has the capacity to kind of bring people together, and raise social awareness. So mm -hmm. I think that that's a really big thing right now, especially is, you know, what can we turn to 
Um, art is always there. It's not going away. That's one thing that is going to be here. We're even doing a Zoom play. Like we're still doing it. We're trying to bring this to people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also just about, I mean, one thing that I thought was, I kind of had this moment one day where I realized this, it's really interesting because, I mean, throughout the play, Alemp, my character, is with these three women and is going through all her struggles with these three women and talking her things, her issues out with these three women. Mm -hmm. But in reality, she never met those women in real life. She didn't know them. Uh, she, even in the play, like, she's really just kind of imagining them. That's what it is. She's never with them in real life. So I think it's, you know, she has to look inward to find everything she needs. And right now, maybe we can't be with people in real life, but... Um, that's just, I think, one thing to take away is during this time, you know, there are places to turn to. Even though if we feel alone, there's a lot of other places to go. We can look inward. We can, um, I mean, connect with people, <laughs> um, even not in person. A limp in the play technically is alone the whole time. Yeah. All the characters, you know, don't actually interact with each other. But, you know, there's a lot there. There's more than just being alone in your thoughts. You know, there's, there's a lot more. So I think that's, we can't really do anything right now um, in terms of actually making change happen in terms of you know the actual circumstances we're in other than you know doing our part mm -hmm. and being safe but the couple of things we can't take away from this play are that you know we can you know we have ourselves we have um art you know there's a lot of other ways to to mm -hmm. just have hope i love it thank you whenever you're ready to run for us let me know <laughs> Uh, or an Academy Award. You've got my vote. Either oh, thanks. Way. Could I maybe wrap up with uh, the hardest part for you uh, and your favorite part of the process hmm. so far? Yeah, definitely the hardest part is uh, probably the obvious, but not actually being with these people in person. Um, because, you know, one of the things that I really love about theater is that, especially when you're in a cast, you get really close to them and you have personal bonds. And this show specifically, um, I was really excited to work with these three, you know, great women and get to know them. But honestly, we haven't really had that opportunity that we have very little time. We don't really get to have those little breaks um, where we sit and have our snacks and like chat and bond um, over Zoom. We don't get to have that. So we haven't really had the opportunity to really get to know each other, um, especially in a play that is about, you know, sisterhood and these four women who bond in such a short period of time. So you know, that was a really hard part for me is that we didn't have that chance to create that real bond that would be shown on stage. So that was really hard. And also just I, as we have been doing, getting to the end of the process and doing full length runs, um, I realized it's really difficult to keep your energy up when you're technically in a room by yourself. You know, there's such an energy that you get from people in a room when you're actually talking to them and then the audience who you're hearing them laugh or you're hearing them gasp or yeah. there's such an energy from people in a room that you do not get when you're by yourself in a room talking to a camera. You see the people you're acting with, but it's not really the same. It's as if you're like watching TV and acting like you're, you know, it's, it's just not the same. So that is a really hard part. But to that being said, um, some, I mean, my favorite part is just the fact that we're doing it at all. Um, obviously, it's a really tough time. And I've personally had a really hard time, you know, motivating myself to actually do things or sometimes even connect with people. It's hard to, you know, get yourself to do those things. Um, so it's kind of just been a routine where every single day we have rehearsal, we see the same faces and we're all doing this big project together. Even though we feel alone, we're all working on it together. There's a lot of things and mm -hmm. factors that have come into this process that are all coming together. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I was really very, very sad when you know I, there was a chance that we just wouldn't even be able to work on this play at all because I was so excited about it. It's such a great play. Um, so I'm really happy that we get to explore it still and get to share it with people and just have it in general. Like I said, obviously we have art. That's the one thing that, I mean, that I can, at least me personally can know is still there and turn to. So um, that is just my favorite part just in general is just having it as part of my life right now and being able to really have this process, even though it might not be the way I imagined it, I'm really thankful to just have it at all. Well, I can say on behalf of the soon to be audience, we're very grateful to have it. 
as well. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> but she's getting a little old, and uh, I'm yes. very excited to see this this new show. Excellent, extraordinary, important content, and in a new medium. So, yeah. Thank you for the hard work that you're you're doing, and thank you for the the time to chat with me today. Yeah, of course, I'm excited. Yeah, it'll definitely be a new experience for everyone, even the audience. So it'll be exciting. Awesome. We'll break a leg. Thank you so much.